Getting ready to buy or sell a home? Do you want to help support pro-life organizations? Then you need Real Estate for Life. Get a top-notch real estate agent and support pro-life causes. Go to realestateforlife.org to learn more. May the holy name of Jesus and Mary be blessed now and forever. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Today, brothers and sisters in Christ, we celebrate this great feast of the Catholic Church of St. Monica. She is, as we know, the mother, the great mother of St. Augustine of Hippo, and was born in the year 322 in a place called Tagasti, which is now located in the modern-day Algeria. Her parents were Christians, but little is known of her early life. Most of the information we have about this great saint comes from Book 9 of her son's Confessions. Saint Monica then, an example, her example converted both her husband and her mother-in-law through her patience and kindness, and her example eventually led to their conversions to Christianity. She prayed for her son, Augustine, for 17, for 17 years before his conversion. Much of what St. Monica is known for now in the church is her persistence and perseverance in prayer. Her son, St. Augustine of Hippo, lived a life of immorality, most notably that of lust and impurity before he converted to Catholicism. Throughout these years, she endured a tremendous amount of suffering. Augustine rejected her on multiple accounts, but she continued to love, she continued to love, to pray, to nurture her son throughout his wayward time. She felt discouraged, but she never gave up. Saint Monica cried many times over her son's transgressions, but received affirmation from God on several accounts. She had a dream in which she wept over her son and a figure told her that he was still with her. In this autobiography called Confessions, Saint Augustine writes, that it was my soul's doom she was lamenting. The figure told her, Saint Monica, then to be at peace and see that where she was, I was also. She also received encouragement from her local bishop who told her that God's time will come. He added, go now, I beg you, it is not possible that the son of so many tears should perish. She knew her purpose in life. Saint Monica wept. And this is what we have read in the gospel account today of the, the rising of the sun by our Lord Jesus Christ at Naim. Jesus wept because the widow had lost her son and he raised this man to life. This is what our Lord has done also through the prayers of Saint Monica to raise Saint Augustine, her son, to life. She prayed and sacrificed for her son for all of these years. Her greatest desire in life was to see her son, his conversion to Catholicism. And once this happened, then she believed her purpose in life had been fulfilled. She said then to Augustine just a few days, before she came down with fever, the fever that caused her death. My son, speaking of myself, nothing earthly delights me any longer. I do not know why I am still here or why I should remain here. I have no further earthly desires. Saint Monica also, as we recall, had a vicious husband as well as a wicked son. She, however, converted these both. But how and by what means? 
not by strife or contention, not by abuse and injuries, not by swearing or cursing, but, dear brothers and sisters in Christ, by patience, by tender exhortations, by constant prayers. Oh, that all women, all parents use such means with, when they have bad husbands and wicked children. These are not to be changed by curses and abuse, but by love, charity, docility, and patience. She is the patron Saint Monica of wives, mothers, conversions, alcoholics, and abuse victims. Saint Monica is a great example then of faith and hope. God's grace is infinite, we know, and he will never abandon us, even if it seems as if he is not present with us. God knew well, know well that God will never abandon us, even in the hardest times, and will always listen to the prayers made with the heart. The life of Saint Monica is also a great lesson to us to know that those who are striving for Christian perfection in this lifetime, God does not reward the success of our efforts always, but rather he rewards in regard to the, our interior patience and perseverance. As a virgin Saint Monica, she was modest in retiring, was devoted to prayer, was kind to the poor, took no pleasure in luxuries or elegant garments, married not without the knowledge and consent of her parents, but more in obedience to them than because it was her own wish. As a wife, she showed almost wonderful reserve and patience. She suffered the wrong done to her in silence, in silence but endeavored to reform her husband by kind persuasions and prayers. She manifested, however, the greatest solicitude to give her children a Christian education. As a widow, she loved solitude and silence and fled from all lawful pleasures and avoided the slightest shadow of vanity in the attire and her behavior. This is what we read also in today's epistle, the epistle of St. Paul to Timothy, but that she is a widow indeed and desolate. Let her trust in God and continue in supplications and prayers night and day. We always pray then for the conversion of souls. Why not pray ourselves today for the perseverance of Saint Monica and one of the greatest gifts of, from God, the grace of final perseverance. Consider then the means that will preserve us unto death. It is firm and lively faith and a strong and fervent love of God. How greatly we need the perseverance of Saint Monica and the widow in this Holy Scripture today. Note well in this parable on this discourse in St. Luke on the art of perseverance in prayer. A woman kept coming to a judge that neither feared God nor respected man, trying to get justice for a wrong someone had done to her. The judge had no sympathy for her nor did he care about any sort of justice in the matter. But, dear brothers and sisters in Christ, as scripture tells us in St. Luke, this judge finally gave in to her and gave her the justice she deserved because of her persistence. In this month of May then, this is the Marian month, this great month of Our Lady, why not ask the Blessed Virgin Mary the personification of perseverance itself from this, for this great grace and gift from God to persevere to the end. Final perseverance is so great a gift from God that it is quite gratuitous on his part and we cannot merit this gift. Saint Augustine says that all who seek it 
obtain it from God. And according to Father Suarez, they obtain it infallibly if only they are diligent in asking for it to the, for the, um, up until the end of their lives. This is what we should be asking Our Lady for. All the graces that God dispenses to men pass through the hands of our Blessed Mother. It will be equally true that it is only through Mary that we can hope for this greatest of graces, perseverance. Saint Germanus called the most blessed virgin the breath of Christians. For as the body cannot live without breathing, so the soul cannot live without having recourse and recommending itself to Mary, by whose means we certainly, we certainly acquire and persevere the life of divine grace, preserve the life of divine grace within our souls. Mary, the Blessed Virgin Mary, says to us in the book of Proverbs, you may recall, which are applied to her by the church. Blessed is the man that heareth me, and that watcheth daily at my gates, and waiteth at the posts of my doors. Mary then prevents souls from straying into vice. Again, in Proverbs, we are told that all Mary's children or all Mary's clients are clothed with double garments and thus they persevere in virtue. Let us then conclude, dear brothers and sisters in Christ, with the words of the great Saint Bernard of Clairvaux. O man, whoever thou art, understand that in this world thou art tossed about on a stormy and tempestuous sea. Rather than walking on solid ground, remember that if thou wouldst avoid being drowned, thou must never turn thine eyes from the brightness of this star, but keep them fixed on it and call it Mary. In dangers, in straits, in doubts, remember Mary, invoke Mary. Yes, in dangers of sinning, when molested by temptations, when doubtful as to how you should act, remember that Mary can help you and call upon her and she will instantly help you. Let her name leave thy lips. Let not thy, her name leave thy lips, and let it be ever in thy heart. Take away the sun, and where will be the day? Take away Mary, take away Mary, and what will be left but the darkest night? The witness of Saint Monica then gives us great confidence in the trials and tribulations of today to keep knocking on the door. Jesus and Mary will surely listen. As our Lord says in the book of the Apocalypse, the book of Revelation, behold, I stand at the gate and knock. If any man shall hear my voice and open to me the door, I will come in to him and will sup with him and he with me. The Venerable John Berkman used also to say, whoever loves Mary will have perseverance. We repeat, whoever loves Mary will have perseverance. Do not lose heart then with your perseverance in this lockdown, in these times at the moment and beyond. You can conquer the world so that one day you will behold the object of your hope and lively faith and adore him, Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior, with Saint Monica and the Blessed Virgin Mary forever and ever, amen. May the holy names of Jesus and Mary be blessed now and forever. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen.